the second great virtue that St Thomas examines in the Secunda Secunde is hope, it gets two questions, 17 and 18, plus the following question on the gift of fear. So it's a short treatise, but very important. St Thomas's theology is, of course, drawn from Scripture. In the Old Testament, there is a great deal of hope based on God's mighty deeds and on his covenant, his pledge of loyalty. And in the New Testament, hope is based even more firmly on Jesus' passion and resurrection and on the way in which he was able to attract sinners into repentance. I mentioned Hebrews 11 as a great treatise on the history of faith. It's also a treatise on a history of hope, and that continues into the next chapter. So faith and hope are rather intertwined in Scripture, but St Thomas distinguishes them fairly carefully. And we should also realise that our Christian hope is based on the sacraments. As St Thomas puts it in his Antiphon, O Sacrum Convivium, the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, are pledges of future glory. So St Thomas sees hope as basically a strength of will. Faith, we saw, is a strength of intellect, though we have to make an option to believe. Hope is a strength of the will which energises us for the task of the Christian pilgrimage. It belongs basically on the affective side of the human psyche, our ability to be attracted by the good, because hope enables us to pursue a good that we don't yet possess. That's a point made in Romans chapter 8. In fact, for St Thomas, following Aristotle, hope can refer to one of the irascible emotions. A kind of drive that enables us to tackle an important good which is difficult and demanding, but manageable with effort and perhaps with help. You are walking along the side of a field with a thorn hedge to your right, and your concupiscible emotions encourage you to keep on walking till you can get to the gate and go into the street. But the bull comes charging at you with its horns down. You can see a way to escape from being gored. Hope is aroused and enables you to push your way through the thorn hedge and escape. And by a kind of analogy, as a theological virtue, a God-given strength, hope is a God-given, God-sized and God-directed energy, empowering us to tackle the journey into God. A journey not just, not just demanding, but impossible without God's grace. But we have learnt to see the journey to a divine goal as possible, because God's love and power have been made known to us. Hope is based on the love and power of God to save us. The theological virtues don't really lie in a mean, I explained, unlike the moral virtues. But hope comes closest to lying in a mean because, in one sense, it's halfway between despair and presumption. Despair basically says, I'm too far gone for God to care for me or save me. St Thomas suggests it tends to derive from achadia, which we sometimes translate as sloth, a kind of spiritual ennui, spiritual depression, laziness, a lack of energy. 
and then we can fall into despair. We are dispirited. And despair is contrary to a proper sense of God's power and even more a proper sense of God's love. Presumption can mean two things. It can mean basically, I can save myself, I don't need God. That's basically the heresy of Pelagianism. And St. Thomas thinks that tends to derive from the vice of vain glory, vanity, that kind of mindset where I delight in my strength or beauty or competence or whatever. But in the present context, as an opposite to despair, presumption is saying, I'm so important that God must save me despite myself. I can stay in my sins, I can not make any effort, and God must save me all the same. And that's closer to the truth than despair is, because God does want to save us. He makes promises to save us. And yet there is something wrong and pernicious about presumption, because it thwarts the nature of hope as an energising cooperation with God. Of course, God in one sense does everything that is done, but in such a beautiful and wise way that he gives creatures jobs to do in the world and in the life of grace. He empowers us even more and more beautifully. So presumption thwarts that hope as energy. And it tends to derive, St Thomas suggests, from superbia, pride, which is something rather different and much nastier than mere vanity. It basically makes myself the centre of the universe in place of God. And steering between despair and presumption gives us a sense of hope as something confident and energising. And we'll look in the next video at the confidence of hope.